When dear uh, David Hubel compares our understanding of the brain to our understanding of the printing press, he makes the claim in Mind, Brain and Vision that one day we will be able to understand the brain in the same way that we understand the printing press. When he makes that claim, I think he's... The reason, one of the reasons why it's problematic, apart from things of what he said about that there being different ways in which we understand things, is because the way we would understand the printing press, and here I'm in front of envisaging a, a printing press that Thomas Caxton would recognise, not a modern printing press. But the way we understand the actual physical object of the printing press is because we have an embodied relationship to that object. We, um, the printing press has uh, a little beam at the side uh, placed for our hand. And I think when we look at the printing press, we can sort of imagine ourselves placing our hands on it and um, get an almost visceral sense of the effort it would take to turn the handle to lower the press. And uh, we also have a sort of spatial relationship to it as an object. This is something I think um, Heidegger talks about, it may be Merleau-Ponty. It talks about um, how we position ourselves in relation to objects, or more accurately, how the objects themselves uh, call us and invite us to be positioned in certain ways. I think it's called something like maximum grip, this idea that we position ourselves at a at a certain distance from an object and in a certain relationship to an object, physically, in space, such that we are able to maximally engage with that object using the sensors and the limbs and the arms and like the, the stuff of the body to do that with. Um, in one of his writings, Hubert Dreyfus talks about this, and I think he, he gives the example of what it's like to be in an art gallery. I think he talks about it in relation to paintings. That when we approach a painting on the wall of an art gallery, the, we stand at a certain remove from it. We don't get too close, because if we did that, we would lose the, the overall picture. But we don't get too far away either, because then we'd lose the detail. So in a sense, the, the picture positions us at a certain, in a certain sort of spatial distance, and also the way it's, the way it's presented a perspectival painting being an archetypal example, it positions us at a certain relationship. There's only really one place to stand when you're looking for the perspectival painting. But of course, paintings are um, manufactured objects. They're designed by human hands for human hands. In a sense, they're, I think, drawing on the, uh, the phenomenological experience of being uh, objects of a certain size in the world, positioned and positioning ourselves at uh, re in relationships with maximum grip, something like that. But of course that's happening all the time with natural objects. As I'm walking along this road and I'm looking at these steps leading up to one of my dogs is going up now, the steps are a certain height and a certain width and they proceed at a certain angle and that whole surface is um, appropriate to my body, so I have a, a kind of active relationship to those things. Which is, it's completely cognitive, I mean, it's forming my experience. It's not forming a particularly rational or conscious experience, but it's undoubtedly uh, it's, uh, it's, it's shaping my understanding. And my understanding of a printing press is similarly shaped, similarly shaped by my uh, relationships to it, physical relationships, as a fellow medium-sized object in space. That is not true of the brain. The brain is not a medium-sized object moving at medium speed. It does not lend itself to apprehension by the physical senses. I can't... There's no maximum grip I can place on the brain. There are no affordances, if I can dip into J.J. Gibson's work here, there's no, there's no affordances that the brain is offering which again shape my experiential understanding of it as an object.
if it does, to the extent that it does, it shapes me in the same way that a, a bowl of stiff porridge would shape my experience. As a brain, and with the functions of a brain, it isn't orienting me at all. I cannot understand the brain in the same way that I can understand a printing press. The same probably is not true of the mind. I think if uh, Hubel had written mind, I'd be much more in agreement with him. I think there's a good case to be made that the mind, being the product of evolution, is uh, shaped, if I can use that the right word, if I can use that word to, um, it, is, it is shaped to carry out the functions of embodied objects, moving at medium speed. It, it should be offering itself in relations with maximum grip it should be offering affordances. There, should, there are, I guess, a kind of cognitive equivalence of affordances. They're metaphorical affordances. And the maximum grip is a metaphorical grip. But that's every bit, I guess, as understandable as a printing press.